how do you pick a cabin on a cruise ship is very important because the location of your cabin can actually determine a lot about the experience that you end up having. For example, in the cabin I'm in right now, in Carnival Inspiration, we're immediately above the place where you get off the ship when the ship docks at land. So at Ensenada, we wake up, we open up our ocean view, and we can see the gangway right underneath us. And so that can be good and bad. It's good because it's super handy. We go down one flight of stairs and we're out of the ship. When we come back, we go up one flight and boom, we're right at our cabin. But there's also a little bit of noise associated with that. You may or may not care about that. So one of the things when you're booking a cabin is the basic stuff people will tell you is midships gets less motion. The back of the ship, you get the vibration of the engine. The front of the ship, you get the rocking of the ocean. So the most stable part of the ship is the middle. Generally speaking, higher is better. Although in a dream class or a spirit class, they actually have things on like deck five or deck two. So in terms of closeness to attractions, higher isn't always better depending on where you want to spend your time. But if you really care about the buffet, higher is usually better. So those are the basic things that I think most people know about. But the real thing that uh, if you want to take it to the next level in your cabin selection process is you're going to want to go to the Carnival website and look up the ship plan. Uh, for the ship that you're going to be sailing on. You know, just quickly download the PDF. Have it in another window when you're on your desktop. And you're like, okay, look at that cabin. Find it. And the key piece here is look at what is above it and below it. I mean, it's also probably good to know, like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm near the, uh, the elevators. Uh, so there might be extra foot traffic. You may care about that or you may want to be close to the elevator for accessibility purposes or time saving. That's up to you. Make informed choices is what I'm saying. But really look at what's above and below because that can be a huge impact. On the sunshine, I, we were, I believe, directly above where they stored all the luggage, which for most of the sailing was fine. But on the last night, was horrific because they were getting all the luggage ready and storing it in and then in the morning shipping it out. We slept horribly on the last night of that sailing because we didn't check the map. And so one of the things you're going to want to look out for is, am I above or below the galley? Am I above or below a nightclub, a comedy club, a showroom, something like that? The piano bar, these are things that generate noise sometimes into hours where you wish they wouldn't. And also if there's a big blank space and you don't know what it is, maybe that's where the luggage is. Maybe that's where maintenance work is being performed. Maybe, you know, it's right above the engine or something. So ideally you want to have cabins above and below you and probably to either side of you. And that's the way you can best insulate yourself from a sound standpoint. But also looking at that map, you can see like, hey, if you're in a dream class, you might want to be on deck five because they got the hot tubs on deck five and those are awesome. Or maybe you want to be really close to the food. So you want to be, you know, near deck nine or ten for, for the Lido buffet. Or maybe you care a lot about the comedy club. If you're on the legend or uh, the miracle, that's on like deck two. So you might want to be on, might want to be lower. It depends on what you care about. But make informed choices. And there's often an opportunity to save a little bit of money by allowing Carnival to pick the cabin for you. And hey, that's a choice you can absolutely make, but know that they might not give you an ideal cabin. And so one of the ways you can mitigate these problems, and I highly recommend as a packing tip, is bring earplugs. No matter what your experience is or what you're expecting or where your cabin is, uh, you never know if the people in the next cabin are going to be, you know, playing music all night or the people above you exercising in their cabin in the middle of the night or some other thing. Your, you know, your cabin mate might snore. Uh, you might end up in rough seas and there could be water splashing against, you know, the side of your window uh, because the sea or the or rain or hail or whatever might happen. So to be prepared for, uh, you know, a variety of that kind of stuff, you're going to want to, I think, have earplugs and it's going to make it... Um, you know, uh, more adaptable, you can adjust to adversity easier if you have that. So that is definitely something I recommend.